Oh, the Seattle Mariners can always find a creative way to lose. Yesterday, they reached new heights. Or is it new lows? We'll talk about it. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. Mariners Madness with Rob Guerrera. The pitch from Acevedo. A drive feet to right field. Down the line. The Mariners win this game 2-1. to one. The dream lives. They're going to the playoffs. The drought is over. The sickest Seattle Mariners podcast. It's going to be sick. What is good, everybody? Welcome to the Mariners Madness podcast on the Sick Podcast Network. I'm your host, Rob Stats Guerrera. Please give us a like and a subscribe on YouTube and rate, review, and follow the Mariners Madness podcast wherever you get your audio podcasts. Oh, boy. Last night was very frustrating. We'll talk about what could and should have been for the Seattle Mariners against the Detroit Tigers. We'll take a look at some really, really questionable decisions by Scott Service. Julio Rodriguez is doing everything he can to make a comeback. And of course, we'll do three up, three down as well. But let's start with the game last night. Last night could and should have been a celebration of what the Mariners did at the deadline, right? And, and a celebration of what this team could be. We'll get to the ninth inning in a second, right? But this situation was this. If you didn't happen to see last night's game specifically, maybe you just woke up, checked the box score, whatever. Mariners are down uh, in the eighth inning, three to two. They got a runner on. The runner is Randy Arozarena, right? There's two outs. Arozarena doubles. Yay. Cal Raleigh comes up and hits a blast to right center field. Just an absolute rocket that Parker Meadows goes back and robs, completely robs a home run. Like, no question, his his shoulder was at the yellow line when he jumped up at the fence. He makes an incredible catch. And that was the third out of the inning. So the Mariners went into the ninth inning, three to two, before it ultimately got away from them. And what should have been was, it should have been a home run, right? And it would have been a celebration. Oh, my goodness. Look at what happened. The Rosarena doubled their deadline acquisition. Cal Raleigh hits the home run. The Mariners have just enough offense to squeak by, right? Because Munoz comes in then the ninth, locks it down. One, two, three, boom, Mariners win, Mariners win. It should have been a celebration. It should have been a justification. What's the a validation? That's the word of everything the Mariners did at the deadline, right? And instead, Parker Meadows makes a great play, and we go into the ninth inning three to two Tigers instead of four to three Mariners in the ninth inning. This is when I think the wheels fell off clearly for the Mariners. Jonathan Hernandez comes in, walk, walk, gets an out single. That's it. Service pulls the plug, brings in Trent Thornton. What does he do? Strikes the guy out and then single, single, single. And luckily a runner gets thrown out at the plate and the Mariners go into the ninth inning down way more runs, no shot to win, and they end up losing the game. A lot of people after the game or or during the game, really, on Twitter are saying, why didn't they go to Jimmy Garcia? Why didn't they go to Andres Munoz? Well, Jimmy Garcia, according to service, is a little different. There were some injury concerns with him. They don't want to use him three days in a row. They don't want to use him three times in four days. And when they used him, you know, a lot, the second time, He didn't look as good. And he remember he had an injury earlier this year. So they're, they're trying to manage that. Okay. Like what was the point of dealing for this guy at the deadline? If you couldn't use him when you wanted to, but okay, fine. Right. You're the manager. I will trust in that situation. You know, more than I do, you know, more about his health, how he's feeling on any particular day. Right. Okay. I think we have to allow a little bit of grace there, but why don't you bring in Munoz in that spot? That's what I don't understand. Bring in Munoz, have him lock it down, and you go into the ninth inning down by a run, and you see what happens, right? You roll the dice, you take your chances. Give yourself a chance to steal one. And instead, Service says after the game, he's not going to use the high leverage relievers unless the game is tied or the Mariners have a lead. He's not going to use them when they're down by a run. And I got to tell you, that is a stunning lack of awareness 
by the manager of this team. It really is. He's managing like they still have a 10-game lead in the division, right? You have lost that luxury now because you have burned through your lead in the division. If you had a 10-game lead, I totally get it, right? You don't want to overtax people. You're not going to play to win any one game because you got to look at the bigger picture and you got the playoffs going forward and all of that. And I would completely understand that if that were the situation. But that's not the situation. You've lost the lead. I don't know if the Mariners are not aware of the standings, but you are in a sprint from now until the end of the year. There is no managing for tomorrow. You have to win every single game. You have to play to win every single game, I should say. You've lost the luxury of the lead. So for him to say we're not going to do that, it's just completely contrary to the reality that they are in. You can't wait until there's a week left in the season before you start pulling out all the stops. You can't. I'm stunned to hear Scott Service say that. I really do. And you know my philosophy. Look, I generally think baseball managers don't do much. This is really the only thing that they do, right? Their only tangible contribution is like you decide who pitches when. And you're down in the division now because you lost that game. You're down a half game. And I know it's only a half game, but this is a team that finished a game out of the playoffs last year, right? Like this is a team that has missed the playoffs by the tiniest of margins in recent years. You can't afford to just give games away. You can't afford to just throw Jonathan Hernandez in there and hope. Hope is not a strategy. I've said it a thousand times. Hope is not a strategy. Does Scott Service like not realize who the Mariners are? Did he just expect them to like put up a bunch of runs and then like you got to eke this out? Your offense is barely good enough to maybe eke out some of the games some of the time. <laughs> you can't afford to have an if they go up by two runs, the game is over. It is over. You were conceding the game in that case. I'm stunned to hear him say that. And to just have this blanket, hard and fast rule, like we're never going to use these guys. Like you can't manage that way the rest of the year. This isn't a, a hypothetical exercise. This is a real baseball game. It's like actual reality here. And it just seems like the Mariners are always content to just let circumstances dictate things instead of dictating themselves. And they'll get to the last week of the season and they'll say, oh, well, now we got to pull out all the stops, this, that, and the other thing. No, like, no. What you do now affects what it's going to look like when you get to that point down the road. So stop acting like you have no control over it and stop hoping that things turn out well and take the steps to actually make them turn out well, right? Don't just be a twig on the shoulders of a mighty stream. That's not that. You have to do everything in your power to win as many games as possible. And if you don't, that's a dereliction of duty. I'm sorry. That is just a pathetic dereliction of duty by Scott Service. It really is. And oh, by the way, Andres Munoz hasn't pitched since August 3rd. What, what are we doing here? Like, I'm sorry. That is just bad managing by Scott Service. It really is. You cannot wait until the last week of the season to get serious here. You're playing against the Tigers, a team that is not very good. You should have won two out of three games in this series. I'm sorry, man. It's a bad job by service. It's a bad, bad job. And the rest of the teammates in the locker room have to be looking at him questioning like, dude, what are you doing? What are you doing? Especially when Hernandez comes in and gives up two walks and gets a fly out. Why not bring in Munoz at that point, right? Like, okay, you didn't want to go to him right away, whatever, but now the, the crap's about to hit the fan. What are we doing here? You bring in Trent Thornton? I'm stunned, man. I am absolutely stunned. And I don't like to pin losses on managers, but man, this sure seems like Service did everything he could to avoid putting his team in the best scenario to win. And that's what you're supposed to do as a manager or as a coach, right? There's only so much you can control because you're not actually playing on the field. It is your job to put every player and your team as a whole in the best position to win the game. And I don't know how 
you can look at what the Mariners did last night and say their manager put them in the best position to win. I, I just don't. I absolutely don't. I hate hard and fast rules like that. Oh, well, if we don't have the lead or tied, we can't use our high leverage relievers. Why not? Why not? You know, that's like when you, you're arguing with some store or company, like they're trying to screw you over and you go in and you're like, hey, you're screwing me over. You know, X, Y, Z, I'm getting a raw deal here. And they say, well, that's our policy. It's like, well, guess what? You're the ones that make the policy. You can change it at any time. <laughs> Acting like it's outside of your control is ridiculous. And that's what the Mariners do way too often, way too often. So I was incredibly frustrated by that. And I got a little more on Scott service later that we'll talk about. But I, I felt like the Mariners, honestly, just I don't want to say they gave it away because they didn't have a lead, but they just didn't do everything. They did not maximize their chances of winning. And for a team that is basically has to win the division to get into the playoffs. It's inexcusable. It's inexcusable and it has to stop or they will miss the playoffs again. One more thing before we get to three up, three down. Uh, Julio Rodriguez is working his way back from a high ankle sprain. I saw a report yesterday that what Seattle might try and do is DH him only so that because he can't really play the field yet. He can't really, uh, you know, kind of cut and, and make quick kind of moves like that. So it apparently it doesn't hurt him when he swings. Now, he still has to run the bases. So that's a little dicey, although with the way Julio has been hitting for a lot of the year, maybe he won't have to run the bases because he hasn't been really getting on base a lot. But clearly the lineup could use him or at least the potential of him, right? Um, but that is a dicey situation. As I said, high ankle sprains are very scary. They take a long time to heal, like way longer than you think at certain times. Plus, if he's DHing, you're really going to slow that down a little bit. So we'll see what they choose to do with Julio. I mean, I get it. They're desperate. Uh, it's a high ankle sprain. I don't know that you're necessarily going to risk like any super severe injury if he does DH. Uh, so great. Let's get a 50% or 70% Julio in the lineup every day. I guess it's better than, you know, Cade Marlowe or Dom Canzone. At least Victor Robles can, has proven he can play center field. Thank God for that guy, man. Where would this team be without Victor Robles? My goodness. Uh, one more thing. Actually, I just thought of this before we get to three up, three down. I want to give a quick shout out to Homage. We love Homage. They sponsor the podcast here. If you need some Mariners gear, Go check out homage.com, H-O-M-A-G-E. They have really cool team gear, like different stuff that you don't necessarily see in the stores, which I like a lot of the times. Um, and they also have, if you've got enough sports gear, they have pop culture uh, references and T-shirts and stuff like that. Everything that they make is super, super comfortable. I have a rule that all my clothes have to be comfortable enough for me to sleep in. And guess what? Homage comes through on that rule, so I highly recommend going and checking that out. All right, let's get to it. We do it every Thursday. Three up, three down. <laughs> Going to be quick this week because honestly, there's not much up and there's a lot down, but we'll start with the positive. Three up, three down. The deadline acquisitions. Randy Arena and Justin Turner. I'm combining them into one. They've been everything you could want. Arena has an 854 OPS. Justin Turner's 837. That's way higher than anybody else on the Mariners. They've also got five walks between them. They have added what you had hoped. I mean, a, a Rose Arena especially. I feel like, man, that guy is always getting on base. Uh, Justin Turner had a scare because he got hit by a pitch. He was in the lineup last night, but who knows? You know, he's obviously not 100%. But they have added to this lineup the way you would have hoped. You know, we said when they were acquired, these aren't guys that, you know, you sort of have to patch up like these are not fixer uppers these are guys that are hitting they're hitting now and they have continued to hit since they have come to seattle so credit to them they deserve to be in three up three down number two mitch Haniger, and this is kind of a low bar because he's been really bad but he's hitting 250 over the past week a couple of bombs three rbis and ops over 950 he said he's given credit to justin turner for helping him out he also said he sort of abandoned some swing adjustments and stuff that he made in the off season that, you know, he really thought it was good, but they weren't working. He went back to kind of the old faithful and he feels a lot more balanced at the plate. That's cool. My question would be, what the hell took so long, dude? Why are you waiting until August to make these changes? Maybe, I don't know, after a couple months, maybe then that would be the time to make the changes. How about like June? Just a thought. 
I mean, it couldn't get much worse from where you were. But whatever. If if it if he made the changes and we get this version or something close to it of Mitch Haniger the rest of the way, obviously I will sign up for that. I'm rooting for Mitch. I like Mitch Haniger, but he just hasn't been any good. Lastly, on three up, three down, Luke Rayleigh. The dude is never boring. I'll say that. He hit a home run in T-Mobile this week. I've never seen anybody hit it to the upper deck where he hit it in right field. I've never seen that before. He killed that ball. It was absolutely annihilated. That is such a far home run. And I've been watching Mariners games in that stadium for a long time. I've never seen anybody go there. If, if you can remember somebody that has, let me know if I'm just forgetting. But man, that was an absolute moonshot. One of the longest home runs I've ever seen. Uh, but Luke Rayleigh, six RBI in the week and OPS over one. Yes, a major league power hitting week, at least one week from Luke Rayleigh. But God, does this lineup sorely need it? And I've said it time and time again on this show. They're just going to have to ride the one or two hot guys for a week and hope that they can squeeze out as many wins as possible. As much juice from that orange as possible. So that's three up for this week. Uh, Rosa Reina and Justin Turner smashed into one. Mitch Haniger and Luke Rayleigh. Now, three down. First up, like the whole bullpen. That's not Jimmy Garcia or Andres Munoz. Pick your poison. Diaz, Saucedo, Hernandez. Their ERAs look like bowling scores, for God's sakes. I mean, last week they or last night they come in and it's just comical. It's comical how bad they are. The one thing I cannot stand from my bullpen is walking, guys. If you come in and give up hits, okay. But at least make them earn it. At least make them earn it. I, I just, it's intolerable. And this bullpen has not really been good for a long time, to be honest with you. They started the year very, very good, but they have absolutely not maintained that. And it's incredibly frustrating because we know the pitching staff has to be amazing. All of them, not just the starters, all of them have to be amazing to give the Mariners a chance to win. And the bullpen has not picked it up. They, they, I don't know if you call up people from AAA, but it has to be better because if it continues like this, like you're just going to give these games away. And, and like I said, you're not in a position where you can give games away. Next up, a familiar face on three down, Jorge Polanco. Yep, he's back to his old self. 187 average over the past week, just at 375 OPS. He ain't it. Like we thought, hey, maybe we'll get a competent hitting second baseman the rest of the way. Nope, we won't. And oh, by the way, he's battling a knee injury again. Hurt guys get hurt. Jorge Polanco has been hurt way too many times this year. He's just not it. I have no hopes for him the rest of the way. It stinks because he, when he's hitting, he really changes the lineup. But sorry, Jorge Polanco ain't it. Last up on three up, three down. I got to put Scott Service in there for the first time this year. And again, usually I don't put a manager one way or the other. But for all the stuff I detailed at the top of the show, he's in there. And, you know, another thing that just drove me absolutely crazy in the first game against the Tigers. Jorge Polanco previously mentioned singles in the ninth inning right called a single i put single in quotes really he hits a fly ball to center that should end the game the tigers outfielders i don't know what the hell they're doing they're having a staring contest out there and nobody catches the ball the ball just drops in so a run scores to make it four to two you've got a runner on base and luke Rayleigh is scheduled to come up who had a home run earlier in the day as i mentioned and Scott Service pinch hits for Luke Rayleigh to bring in Mitch Garver. And Mitch Garver comes up to the plate and, and is, strikes out in three pitches. It has the most uncompetitive at bat you've ever seen in your life. It was like me going up there. He might as well have gone up there without an actual bat in his hands. Three pitches, boom, boom, boom. Game over. Like the Mariners had a real opportunity to steal a game potentially, or maybe even tie it up and go to extra innings and see what happens purely because of the Tigers' stupidity. And you take out Luke Rayleigh, who has a home run, to bring in Mitch Garver. And look, off the top of my head, I admit, I don't know the lefty righty splits with Luke Rayleigh. You know what? I don't care because when the other option is Mitch Garver. Like, why would you ever pinch hit Mitch Carver? What have you seen in the months and months of this season 
to make you think that's the guy we want up with two outs in the ninth inning and, you know, a runner on maybe a chance to win the game. That's I need Mitch Garver. Like I need the guy that's hitting below 200. That's the guy we need. This will be the one time in 10 where he gets a base hit. I mean, what are we doing here? I, I'm stunned. Like, why? Because the back of Mitch Garver's baseball card says one thing. Like, who cares about that? Look what's in front of you. If you asked every single person in that stadium, who would you rather see bat here? Luke Rayleigh or Mitch Garver? Nobody is saying Mitch Garver. Hell, Mitch Garver. You could tell Mitch Garver didn't even want to be up there. You could just tell by the bat he didn't think he was going to get a hit. And look, I know that Mitch Garver has gone through it this year. He doesn't deserve the personal attacks and criticism, and I'm on record I've said that. I'm purely talking about his professional ability, which this year has been putrid. To, to take out a, another hitter, a guy that has a home run that day, to put him in for Mitch freaking Garver, it's like you're trying to lose Scott Service. That's what it looked like in that spot. It was like, well, the Tiger shouldn't have dropped that ball, so we'll just put Garver up there. He'll get out and, you know, all will be right with the world. Like, I'm sorry. You're in the three down, Scott Service. Big time. Big time. So three down for the bullpen. Uh, the bullpen, excuse me, Jorge Polanco and Scott Service. So now the Mariners sit a half game back. Very, very frustrating. As always, of course, the Astros won. Those jerks. So now let's see if the Mariners can salvage a game, which I should not be saying when talking about a series against the Tigers, who have stunk. And then you got to go to, or I should say, then you welcome in the Mets for three, and then you got to go to Detroit and play these guys all over again. Brian Wu, it's on you. Give me seven innings tonight. Let's salvage at least one win. It's unbelievable. And hopefully the, now we have to hope for a game that's not close because Scott Service might bungle it up, which let's be honest, how many games do the Mariners play that aren't close? Not many. So we'll see. Kind of a sad situation right now. Hopefully the M's can turn it around. The offense has been better since the deadline. Let's hopefully we get closer to what we've seen, you know, the five, six runs a game and the Mariners uh, might be able to do some damage. Anyway, that's it for this edition of the show. Like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Rate, review, and follow the Mariners Madness podcast wherever you get your audio podcasts. I'm on all the socials at Stats on Fire. Hit me up anytime. I love to talk ball with you. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday, everybody. We'll see you next week. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Mariners Madness with Rob Guerrera on YouTube. Google Play and Apple Podcasts.